Hello Vinyl Community. Today we're going to be discussing the Beatles in Mono Vinyl Reissue Series from 2014. Sort of the quality, a background on the project, and it's, it's sort of how it's increased in value today and its future. So, as mostly everyone knows, in 2012, the Beatles did a huge remastering campaign, which involved all the records in their stereo form, all the studio albums. Now this included the CD, CD version, a digital version on a limited edition Apple USB, and vinyl. Now these were all done, these were all digitally sourced. I'm not quite sure if it was a tape transfer or it was just digital files. I know the LP version was the same files they used for the CDs cut onto vinyl. 180 gram vinyl. I currently don't have any of those. I sold most of them because they're just... Sound quality just really isn't that good on them and I'll get more into why. Now those are all cut digitally from digital files. A digital vinyl can sound great when done by the right engineer like a Kevin Gray or a Ryan K. Smith. If you were in Canada like me or in the European Union, you did get, I believe, German pressed records which were a little bit better in quality, lower defect rate, and overall nicer, nicer vinyl. But if you're in the US you weren't so lucky. And there was a lot of fans that weren't happy that Apple did such a subpar job. But they came out, it sold pretty well. I mean, still up to this, you can still find the stereo pressings in most record stores, at least in Canada. Not so much the boxes anymore, they're so, sort of dried up, but most of the stereo reissues you can still find. Now, Apple went along and now their next job was to produce a series of mono CDs and mono vinyl. Now once again, the about in 2013, so a year after the stereos, the CDs, stereo CDs came out in 2009, the vinyl came out in 2012. Now in 2013 they released the mono, the mono recordings on CD. So now Apple was moving on to the mono vinyl box set and this is similar to how they did the stereo. It was going to be cut from digital files, the same files that they did the mono CDs from. They had sent samples, uh, either test pressings to Michael Fremer of Analog Planet, of Stereophile, now the Absolute Sound, and he wasn't very impressed. He really sort of tore them a new one, metaphorically speaking, over these pressings. Didn't like the fact they were doing digital, uh, recommended that they do it right, do it from the original analog master tapes, and he just really let them have it. So they they kind of agreed with him, and they agreed to do it triple A. So analog mastering, analog cutting, analog tape. So for that, they brought in Steve Berkowitz, who I believe was working with Sony at the time. And he was responsible for the Dylan Mono recording, which you Dylan Mono recordings box, the original Mono recordings, which used all analog master tapes for the Bob Dylan catalog on vinyl. And he really took the same approach to this Beatles and Mono series, which was getting the original tapes and making these as faithful to the originals as possible. And Michael Fremer was invited to Abbey Road to sort of oversee these mastering sessions. And the mastering, they, these were done by, I believe, Sean McGee at Abbey Road. They were cut by. And all, orig all analog, and they, they used Harry Moss's original cutting notes from the original 1960s mono UK releases. So these were released in a box set format, the mono, mono LPs, and they were released individually. Now, the box set was in originally limited to 10,000 copies, but I believe that was increased. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 100,000 of each record was pressed, and the 
what we got after the complaining and campaigning from uh, very well-known vinyl community members was nothing short of spectacular. Probably the greatest, single greatest reissue series of vinyl records we've ever received, at least by a major label. Now, I was not, I didn't start collecting vinyl until 2018, so I completely missed the boat on these pressings. And in recent years, they've skyrocketed in value. We'll get more into that later, but I did pay aftermarket price. I know in 2016, 17, there was retailers even discounting these this box because it didn't sell well to begin with. It was so, it was released so close to the stereo box set, a lot of people didn't double dip besides diehard Beatles fans. And it sat for a while, it was discounted, a lot of people missed the boat, and a lot of people are mad now that they can't get them at retail prices. Now, I'm one of those people, I paid, I believe it might have been 500 or 600 United States dollars. This box originally I think went for 300. I didn't even buy the box set, I just got the individual LPs and I bought them off the Steve Hoffman forum. There was a member selling them in the classifieds and I was, he was very generous. He even included some sealed copies, which I never even had asked for, for a very fair price. I was very happy with it. And these are LPs that are just never going to leave my collection. Unless, I don't know, they, they somehow, Analog Productions or someone got their hands on the Beatles tapes, I'd never, never give these up. So, now to the records themselves. We have Please Please Me. And the the individuals, how you could tell they were different was the individuals uh, that weren't part of the box set came in sort of, um, they came shrink wrapped. The ones in the box sort of had this, um, sort of had a cover like this, but it had a, a sticky tab on the top instead of the bottom. So they, the individual releases had this, this sort of hype sticker, which lets you, the Beatles in mono the album name, Please Please Me, all the tracks, um, a little bit of information, how it was, they really made an emphasis on how this was done from the original tapes, barcode, and credits, and all that. Now, these were released in poly lined sleeves, just like how they would have been released in the UK, Great Britain, in the 1960s. And this comes in the original black and gold or bronze, whatever you want to call it, Parlophone label. Original pressings of this guy go for into four figures, you know, maybe even five for like a really mint copy. So this was special that they did this, the original label. For Please Please Me. Obviously second pressings of Please Please Me use the black and yellow parlophone label and they're not nearly as rare now i'll for this demonstration i will take this out of my uh won't do this for all of them but i will take it out of my sort of protective covering here now there it is i, I just keep the shrink on it i'm maybe for whatever for, not for any particular reason and then everything, even they replicated the flip back covers from the 60s, which later albums like the Rolling Stones and Mono box set never did. So this UK flip back, even the, the advertisement for Emitex record cleaner is uh, on there. Everything is faithful as you could get. It's, it's, it's as faithful as you could get for an album reproduction. And at least all the original, all the, sorry, individual releases included this little bill card with information on the album. So it says, please, please me. This packaging of this album replicates as closely as possible the artwork and construction of the original LP released in March 1963. Some of the copyright change has since, copyright information has changed since then. The reissued information is listed here and on the labels of the disc. And then you get more, and a nice little mastering note, which makes note of completely analog signal path. 
and speaks about the limitations of record players of the 1960s. And the unique thing about this release is the it even go, it goes into detail here. Um, there was damage to the original Please Please Me master tapes, causing some loss of higher frequencies. And uh, so they actually transferred the tracks individually to a new analog cutting reel. And new, they essentially took the original masters and made a copy tape just for this release, which just just does not you don't you don't see it nowadays you just don't like you never see that level of detail to to produce reissues and it has the credits down here mastering engineer sean mcgee um, steve berkowitz is a supervisor and then the beatles love cirque du soleil on the back now these was this was included in all the individual lps Next, this is probably my least favorite Beatles album, With the Beatles. Because it's mostly just standards, cover songs. Again, the hype sticker, the flip back. A Hard Day's Night, once again with the, part, the black and gold parlophone, the flip back jackets. This came with 10 albums in total. The Beatles for sale. The original gatefold of this is not very good quality, but this one is actually quite nice. It's a little flimsy. It's not a stout and jacket by any means, but nice laminate scan on the back, scan on the front. Not the original photo, but still a really nice version. And most interestingly, I actually had an interesting conversation with Steve Hoffman recently about this. Um, particular version he said to really seek out an original stereo copy he says they're just fantastic sounding so that's something I may do help now this is the only blemish on this release for whatever reason I don't know if it's the master tape or just the way it was recorded but at least side one hell of help does not sound very good I don't know if it's like a blanket was over the speakers or what but it's just the first side of help is not very good sounding I much prefer the 2012 stereo or a two box or one box EMI stereo pressing now and then here's rubber sole I've had I had multiple copies of this over the years of this mono pressing I did sell a couple these were readily available into 2019. We're um, Rubber Soul here. Again, excellent reproduction of the cover and, every, and everything about that. These were these two were well available into 2019 at my local stores in Canada, at least. Were Revolver with, and Rubber Soul, and also Mono Masters, which we'll get into. Magical Mystery Tour which is a really, really awesome Beatles record. And they all included the LP version, so not the EP that was released in the UK, the US LP of Magical Mystery Tour. Again, from the mono tapes, all the information tracks, some really just standout tracks on here, you know, Blue Jay Way, Magical Mystery Tour, Fool on the Hill, uh, All You Need Is Love, such a good Beatles album, one of my favorites. It can be argued by some whether it's truly, I guess, an album or not. But, and the cool thing about this, the shrink's still kind of on here, is it came with the Magical Mystery to a booklet stapled inside, which is really cool. Really great attention to detail. And then the creme de la creme, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And they really, really did a stellar job of Sgt. Pepper's. Um, let me fiddle with this sleeve here. They used the, they did the, ori the original colors. They really haven't replicated this on the 2012 stereo. It's more saturated, more higher contrast colors but this is the original sort of it's very washed out coloring obviously the sergeant pepper gatefold and it did come with the sergeant pepper cutouts 
that everyone cut out when they were a kid and the Sgt. Pepper inner sleeve which is just again unbelievable attention to detail that they did with this set everything that the original LPs had is in this set of records and the white album with a numbering even I do prefer the white album in stereo although this is a very good listen there's no I got my blisters on me fingers so there's none of that unfortunately that's omitted from the track but the two LPs of the white album again on the sticker they're made in Germany these were pressed in optimal or sorry at optimal in Germany all of these so gone were the pressing woes of United and Rainbow they decided to press all of these in Germany which really upped the quality they aren't say per se on the quality of an analog productions or mofi pressing especially analog productions who I still think make the greatest vinyl pressings in the world at quality press record pressing these are still really damn good. They're very staticky, I find. If you don't get what I found, if you don't give them a cleaning with a record machine, but they're still very high quality. And last but not least, they included the compilation of the Mono Masters. So this was three LPs, which included a lot of singles that didn't appear on the Beatles albums. It's similar to how the stereo set had Past Masters. This was called Mono Masters. It did not, this did not include Past Masters. They just did Mono Masters for this set. Now this includes some really awesome tracks. I'll try and get it on there. Um, so, uh, you know, Love Me Do, the original single version from Me To You. Thank you, girl, she loves you. I'll get you. I want to hold your hand. Um, some German versions of the songs, which was really cool that they were played in Germany or recorded for German radio at the time um rain paperback writer we can work it out day tripper um hey jude revolution um get back uh don't let me down across the universe you know my name look up the number really 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 cool and what's even cooler is this is a it's a trifold with like essays in there just explaining the whole mono box and mono process so if you mean you saw i mean i didn't really sh go through in depth through all of them just because a lot of them are sort of the same in terms of you know they have the flip back jacket the per the labels i just went in sort of on the more interesting ones of the bunch like the gate folds and obviously mono masters now mono masters was another one at least in canada that was available well into 2019 as well my i'm not sure just because it was a little higher price it was 75 dollars so maybe that's why it stuck around longer or maybe because it was a comp but it, it's essential to the set as well now the the box itself i can again put photo or photos in here over the video included a nice big thick booklet which I, unfortunately i don't have because i just have the original l the individual lps it included a very big booklet of every, really everything from the just process in the Beatles career which is super awesome to see now that set is the point of contention we're at now in year 2022 is that set sells for well over two thousand dollars which a lot of people aren't happy about I mean neither am I but I can understand why, I mean, flippers definitely did take advantage and hoarders did definitely take, or, you know, collectors did definitely buy multiple sets of which bothers some people because, you know, vinyl's gotten a lot popular since 2014. People are, at least on the Hoffman forum, are really clamoring this for this to be re-released. And I mean, I was told by a very reliable source back in about 2018, pre-COVID, that the, at least the individual LPs were going back in print. Now, I'm not really sure if that's the case anymore, if COVID changed the plans of Apple, because they did spend obviously a lot of time with the Get Back and, uh, you know, let it, whole Let It Be releases, and obviously the White Album re-release, and now, supposedly a revolver re-release remix so 
They might have honestly just scrapped it or pushed it. It might just be so far down the back burner we might not see it for another couple years. I do wish these were in print. I think that they did such an incredible job that something like this should be in print sort of just constantly for people to experience the Beatles in mono, experience how much craft and care went into these LPs. I would love to see the stereo box set done from the original masters done faithfully to recreate the original lps with really good stereo mixes rather than just another giles martin remix i would love to see that above all else i'm not sure it'll ever happen judging through history the beatles typically only do box sets when there's you know a new format release or maybe every 20 or so years we're getting a lot of jazz reissue series but we need a rock reissue series desperately we need someone to a label whether it's universal with all the labels and sub labels they own to just be like okay you're maybe oh or warner brothers just say look let's get a bunch of warner brothers artists classic records and do them as a series all analog good solid covers, good pressings, and put them out at a decent price. I mean, individually, these, when they came out, I think they were $25, which is crazy to think of today with the price of vinyl and the inflation and everything, that these were available for $25, the same price as a Blue Note Classic. These were available at one point retail. Now they're almost unobtainium for most people. So, I would definitely like to see them come back in some form or another. There's speculation whether the metalwork is still, there's still metalwork left over, or whether the Beatles estate's gonna do digital recuts of them. I'm not sure. I mean, it's not looking likely. It's been technically almost a decade since they were in print. I mean,. So I, I don't know, I don't know. But I would love to see them come back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the Beatles in mono is really, really the still the standard for every, you know, artist catalog. If you, I mean that from a major label, it's really the standard. And I'd love to see more bands, more artists, more companies sort of do this with artist catalogs done from the master tapes. I know master tapes are just getting older, becoming more priceless, but we need AAA vinyl, high quality AAA vinyl at a decent price that people can afford and can enjoy. Everyone needs a lot of these records. They're priceless artifacts of time and of history. Thank you for tuning in on today's episode. Next time I'm going to go into some low-key or affordable analog reissues that you may miss that use either stampers from really good reissues or just stuff that you may not know is analog that you could get at a good price. So that'll be the next video. Thanks again for tuning in BC. We'll see you next time.